This is Natural Powerlifting Radio. You're listening to Iron Boy Talk, a drug-free strength and powerlifting podcast with Keith Payne and Rob Wess. On behalf of IBP Talk, we apologize for the audio quality of this recording. Regardless, we hope you enjoy the episode. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is IBP Talk. We're here with Keith Payne and Rob West. I'm Timothy Payne. We have a special guest today. He is the founder of Strong Back Fitness in Franklin, North Carolina, Mr. Rick Tarleton. How are you doing today? Doing well. How about y'all? Good morning, Rick. Doing Doing well. Doing great. So, Rick, if you don't mind, give us a little background about yourself. Well, um... I've always been an athlete. I kind of grew up being a little bit of a farm boy. Um, I worked uh, a bunch of jobs, did a lot of sports whenever I was younger. But um, while I was in my early 20s, I got in an injury. Um, ended up having to spend uh, three and a half years uh, in physical therapy for a back injury and um, having to rehabilitate myself. Uh, after I rehabilitated, um, got into a lot of other different sports outside of powerlifting, uh, trail running, CrossFit, Olympic lifting, bodybuilding. And uh, it just was kind of a happy little accident that I ended up uh, taking up powerlifting and taking it very seriously a few years back. Um, in fact, one of my first meets was actually with uh, Iron Boy Powerlifting. So it was a, a little uh, misadventure that got me into this. So, mm-hmm. But um, yeah, aside I- from... I remember you coming through the IBP, but I, I couldn't place you exactly location-wise, yeah. but I, I do remember you competing. Yeah, uh, I think it was the uh, up in Cherokee uh, was the first uh, IBP meet that we did, uh, me and oh, a few okay. of the other athletes uh, with Team BIG. So. Right, okay. Yep. Gotcha. You lifted uh, in a 148 pure raw that day, I think. Yep, yep. I uh, I was originally uh, normally in the 165 class, um, and I basically started looking through the records, and I just was like, hey, I can easily, uh, in the pure raw stuff, just take over that. And I mean, I could have lifted at the 165, but figured, you know what, I'll do a weight cut. I was a high school wrestler, so weight cuts oh, yeah. kind of come naturally. <laughs> so. Yep. Yep, yep. I'm with yeah. you on that. <laughs> well, I tell you, you hit a 1100 total, I believe. Yep. That's that's Le- not too too far off of our elite number. I think the well, elite it, number's like 1195, something like that. Yep. It, it was one of those things I I could have stayed at the 148, but it was uh taking its toll on me. So, right. I just went right back up to the 165 and uh kept lifting there from then on out. So. Yeah, that weight cut stuff makes it rough, don't it? Oh, yeah. Yep. So what body weight are you walking around at right now? Um, typically, I'm between 165 and 175. Um, I try to stay fairly conditioned and lean at all times. I, I, I did a jump up to the 180s for a little while uh, just to kind of pack on some more muscle, but I, I just had to cut that out and kind of cut back down for the last competition I did. So Right. So you've well, done t- some bodybuilding too? Yeah, I've done a natural bodybuilding show right before I got into powerlifting. Um, it was just a little local show we have in Franklin every year, and um, I jumped in on it. Uh, my girlfriend had jumped in on it. Um, we uh, both took first in our uh, divisions, um, and the next year, she ended up actually, she was doing powerlifting with me on the side also, but she uh, used that training from powerlifting to actually earn her pro card over at the uh, MBPF. So it was a pretty cool little adventure there, too. Yeah, cool. Well, let's talk about your training, uh, powerlifting training and specifically. Uh, what What is your regimen? Well... Um, typically for myself, uh, I go on a three day cycle every week. Um, squats are kind of paramount for what I do. I've been trying to build up my squat numbers for the last year and a half. 
um, because I kept looking at the numbers and they just, I, I wasn't comparable. And, uh, after hip injury that I had to rehab from, um, a year and a half ago, it, it kind of set my numbers back. So I've really honed in on it. Um, Monday typically for me is a squat ramp up, work up to a heavy, uh, three or five rep max. And then the rest of the week, all my squat numbers on Wednesday and Friday are based off of that number. Um, so kind of auto regulation with that. Um, hmm. Typically, uh, I couple squats with another movement, either pressing um, rows or deadlifts. Um, and then after a little bit of work with those, um, I go into about 18 to 30 minutes worth of bodybuilding or conditioning exercises to kind of finish myself off. Cool. Um, so real basic, back to basics. I don't uh, adhere to any fancy, like, fad stuff. I, I try not to uh, complicate what I do. So, amen, right, amen right. on that. That's, yep, definitely. that's kind of what we believe in, too, is just keep it simple. If I heard you right, you're you're squatting three days a week. Yep, I do a real heavy day on Monday, um, and that's usually just a ramp up to uh, three or five rep max. I, I quit doing one rep maxes in the gym for two reasons. One, it it's more for ego um, when I do a one rep max, and it, the risk versus rewards too high. Um, and two, all the guys and gals that I coach. If they see me doing a one rep max, they want to do a one rep max. And right, the problem exactly. doing that, they all end up uh, having trouble after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yep. So doing the three rep max or five rep max at the beginning of the week and then basing the other two days off of that, um, it allows me that if I have a really uh, cruddy Monday, then the rest of the week the volume's a little bit lower um, and the weights are a little bit lower and it still allows me to train intensely, but really cut back on the risk of injury. Right. Um, so typically, uh, Wednesday is kind of a speed or a dynamic squat day, um, while the uh, Friday is typically volume, like uh, usually somewhere around uh, spread out 100 reps, so like a 5 by 20 10 by 10 something like that. So... Yeah, that's that's kind of what we believe in is you train in the gym and you test at the meet. Exactly. So you don't do a whole lot of one rep stuff. Exactly. Oh, uh, so how does your deadlifting go? When well, you, do you do that three days a week, or how does that um, work? In typical, typically my deadlifting and my bench pressing work kind of on the same cycle, where I have a heavy day, uh, then a dynamic day, and then like a volume day. But I spread those out a little bit more. So um, I'll basically I'll have a heavy day one week, and then uh, let's say I did my heavy bench on Monday. Well, that Friday would be the dynamic day, and then the week after would be uh, on the Wednesday of volume day. Okay. And uh, the deadlifts cycle the same way. Um, I've just figured out that squats I can recover from a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. Wow. Bench press and deadlift, or uh, it takes me a, li- a few more days to recover from. Um, yeah. I've seen athletes that can do all three lifts every day of the week, uh, but then again, I train a whole bunch of master athletes, so um, they're all uh, <laughs> ten days, fourteen days of uh, recovery time sometimes. Oh yeah, especially with the deadlift. Oh yes. So I see. Uh I see some of the stuff that you post on your Facebook from time to time, and I, I notice that you do some kind of strongman type training too. Yep, I uh, I got into uh, kind of as a joke a long time ago. Um, I started bending steel and doing old time strongman tricks like <laughs> uh, rolling frying pans and um, tearing <laughs> card decks in half, uh, oh. things like that. Yeah. And uh, cool. that kind of led into flipping tires and doing all the modern strongman tricks. And then beyond that, um, 
it started turning into stupid human tricks. Um, <laughs> things like the other day, I had a uh, I had a tire laying on my back, a six hundred pound tire doing push ups. I mean, it, it was just yeah. stupid ideas like that pop into my head, and I think, hmm, if it doesn't kill me, it'll make me stronger. I saw that, and I don't think I've ever seen that before. Yeah, that was. Really uh, cool. I'm working on some. Yeah, I'm working on a few more tricks. Um, it's just finding um, crazy enough assistance that they'll take on the job where it's like, oh, you got to roll this over top of me, and then I'll start doing, like, presses with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It might kill me, but just don't worry. Just walk out the front door. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, what, what about your nutrition? Well, nutritional-wise, um, I'm kind of what you would call a hard gainer. I I can eat a horse, and I wouldn't gain a pound. Um, but what I found that works for me the most is just eating everything, get all my nutrition from whole food. Um, I mostly, I mean, it, it's kind of funny. If you go over my Facebook or Instagram, um, it, it's almost like I'm a carnivore. I eat meat, uh, meat and potato diet. That's kind of yeah. what I do. Yeah. Uh, I I advocate for people getting everything through just whole nutrition, um, whole foods, um, minimize supplementation unless you really need it. Um, there's a lot of really uh, poor supplementation uh, going on out there. Um, I, I have several people that. They come to me every week here in Franklin, and they ask me what works, what doesn't, and it's always fix your nutrition. Just mm-hmm. start by doing that. So yeah. Well, you're going to make all the vegans mad with that approach. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I school a lot of vegans in my town. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just because it, it, it's entertaining to see how angry they get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I tell you, it's a lot of a lot of vegans up in that area, Asheville oh, yeah. and around. It's it's a lot of that going on. I mean, I I do a lot of plant based stuff because I've I've had some heart trouble and stuff, not necessarily for for training purposes, but I I have noticed there's a lot of vegan activity up in that area for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I, uh, I found that eating. Like a lot of meat from myself actually works really well. My body, ha- I mean, I grew up eating basically meat, potatoes, drinking whole milk, right. yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. stuff, a lot of cheese. And my body adapted to that really well. Um, I also, I can't really, my body doesn't process greens well. The, I have mm-hmm. a few uh, food allergies, so I can't necessarily eat a lot of like vegetables. So the ones I do get in, I mean, I joke all the time about being a carnivore, but I do <laughs> eat some. Um, but if somebody drops a salad in front of me, I'm going to go, why did you actually bring this to me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't know what to do with that, do you? No. Uh, how about that? Well, let's, let's talk about your gym. Uh, where, where is it located and, and what kind of training do you do and, and who do you well, train and all that kind of thing? Well, uh, our gym, Strongback Fitness, is located in Franklin, North Carolina. Um, I, when I was setting it up, originally it was kind of accidental. I started off training out of a larger fitness center in town and was there for a little over five years and just had a parting of ways with them. Ended up uh, taking about a month off and decided, you know what, I can do this on my own. I, I'd already helped other people open gyms, so I was like, you know what, I'll give it a shot. Cool. So I put the place up. Um, I started off with a little, uh, about 400 square foot office area. Um, ended up upgrading a few months later uh, to a larger uh, 800 square foot area. Then 1,600 square foot, but now we're up to a 4,000 square foot area. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And um, about half of it is for conditioning, um, like mm-hmm. all the tire flipping, all the battle ropes, uh, sled pushes, stuff like that. And the other half I've kind of devoted to uh, weightlifting, uh, resistance training, things like that. 
Um, mm -hmm. We're still growing. I have uh, usually around, I, I keep it a very close-knit, tight community, and I limit the amount of people I take on every month. Uh, right. So we've got only about a little north of 30, almost 40 members right now, and about half of them are on our power list. So mm -hmm. um, I've been lucky in the way that I had the background knowledge running other businesses before I got into this um, mm -hmm. to make it actually uh, feasible from a business perspective. Right. But I've also, yeah, yeah. I've also had the fortune to where I've been able to be picky. That five years that I spent at the fitness center actually allowed me um, kind of to build my reputation in town and to kind of carve out a niche market for myself. Absolutely. Yep. True. So, so is opening a gym something you always wanted to do or did it just kind of happen? Well, um, growing up, I always – thought to myself, I would love to be able to do something physical for a living. Um, so kind of got into farming and stuff like that, but didn't really enjoy it. Um, I mean, it just seemed uh, kind of boring. Um, and also, you don't deal with that many people. Right. Uh, so uh, Later in life, once I got into personal training and everything, coaching, uh, got off on my own, it kind of just naturally happened i it was almost out of necessity because when i parted ways with the uh uh with the fitness facility in town i was just like hmm, okay what am i going to do for food <laughs> so, uh, i can't go to anywhere else they they don't really have the facility that i need i guess i'll just build it myself um yeah yeah <laughs> so i and it, i've always been kind of on my own i i I mean, the fitness center was really the first real job I had outside of running my own companies. So it, it, it was definitely an eye-opening experience. Yeah. Now, do you do uh, personal training or you just got like monthly well, gym we, membership? <laughs> well, we uh, run two programs here. Uh, one is a group fitness program, which is actually how almost every one of my members, including the uh, power lifter, started. Um, uh -huh. And I do offer personal training, like private one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, typically uh, I reserve personal training for people who just need that extra little attention. Right, um, yep. Yeah, so if somebody needs to work on their deadlift or somebody needs some technical work or they need some one-on-one -on -one, like fitness, nutrition advice, that's where the personal training really comes into play. Uh, okay. Otherwise, otherwise, most people get enough out of just uh, coming to the gym, enjoying the mm -hmm. community. Um, we're open at, throughout the days, almost every day of the week, so... Um, like I said, it's, it's just a small little community. I try to make it as uh, cohesive and enjoyable as possible. Right, so. right. It's a beautiful area up, oh, up yes. there because it is definitely up. <laughs> oh, yes. So I noticed you work with a lot of women. Yes. Because uh, you, you brought a, a sizable group of women to one of our contests in Gastonia last year. So is that a big part of your business or? It is inadvertently the majority of my business. Um, it most, uh, if you look at the personal training industry and the gym industry, the vast majority of people going and doing personal training or group training are women. You're talking mm -hmm. over 80%. Wow. Uh, and the same thing applies here. Um, about 85% of the people that are in my place are female. Um, they, it, it's just, I figured out, I think the reason behind that is women don't mind asking for advice right. and men are very proud and will not ask for advice even if they need it. Right. So, so, um, with the powerlifting and everything, especially, um, it, it's one of those things where I start off with, like I said, a lot of these girls started in the groups and they came in one day, saw me lifting, and they were like, hey, I want to try that. And uh, we trained, I think, for about four months before last year's Gastonia meet for them. 
And uh, I think we brought seven girls over there for that one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we're actually, I think, three to five of them are actually going to return uh, uh, July 14th for y'all's uh, uh, push, pull, and Gastonia this year, too. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. The number of women that are coming out to the powerlifting meets has grown tremendously in the last oh, yeah. mm -hmm. year to 18 months. I mean, it's it's crazy. Oh, and, yeah. And, and we're loving every bit of it, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to see the women stepping up or stepping out and and coming to the meets and stuff because that generally wasn't the case four or five years ago. Oh, right. yes. Yeah. yeah, there's a... There's a growing market for it. There's a lot of people that are interested. It's just getting them past that hesitation at the very beginning. Um, a lot of people are very intimidated to go up on a platform or uh, mm -hmm. for any sport, go out and actually compete. They, they don't mind training for it in the gym. It's going out there on the platform in a singlet that scares the heck out of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's true. The one, the one thing... Uh, that always comes to mind. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about powerlifting. Um, right. To the outside, there's uh, powerlifters are just basically lazy, fat bodybuilders. That's basically what always gets confused out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I would love for people to actually see what people really look like. So I always mm -hmm. encourage people to go out to these events because there's a lot of powerlifting events throughout the United States. You can find them online. Um, the IBP has been really good in promoting them over the last couple of years in the Southeast. Um, but I, I would really like to see people go out and actually see what powerlifters really look like, how the powerlifting community really is. Because it's a very inclusive community. A lot of people um, think that it's just all heavy metal, people slapping the heck out of each other and yelling at each other. And that's not the case. It's actually a very, it's one of the most welcoming sports I've ever been in. So, Well, uh, and, and another reason for the misperception of it is generally what feeds into the public eye is the non-tested, uh, heavily equipped, Exactly. version of powerlifting so because it is the extreme version that's what makes it into the public eye and every everyone you know they they tend to think that that's like you said that's what it's all about which it is what it's all about but what they don't understand is there's different categories there's drug tested events there's non-equipped lifters and there's a whole different whole whole wide range of uh options within the sport Oh, yes. Um, I, I really like the IBP because y'all really make it a point to uh, state that y'all are a drug-free organization. You're really pushing that. Um, when it comes down to uh, some of the other federations, um, there are a few federations out there that claim they're drug-tested 100%, right. but they are not. I exactly. mean, anybody especially coming from, like, Olympic weightlifting background and bodybuilding background. Um, hey, you go to some of these uh, meets, and you just know the guy uh, cycled off two weeks prior to the actual meet. And right. even if he does have to do a urine test, that's going to be a long shot that he's going to test positive. Um, but when it comes to uh, – it's kind of like I compete in another federation um, where – I have the squat and the um, bench press record for the drug tested uh, mm -hmm. side of it. Meanwhile, if you look at the untested records, um, their lifts are dramatically, dramatically higher. Um, right. And, and that's one of the things that uh, with my team I really have pushed is we're going to stay drug free. We're trying to keep this as um, – as strict as possible, and we're only going to compete in federations and um, try to hit as many tested events right. as possible because that, that's, that's cool. really important to us, really important to kind of level the playing field for us. So. Exactly. Cool. Good deal. Yeah. Well, we, we appreciate the kind words, and it, 
sure we've enjoyed having you today. It's been a pleasure for us. It's been fun. Uh, yep. So anyway, we'll close out by asking you if if you've got any social media or any type of uh, websites or anything that you would like to uh, let us in on as we close. Uh, tell us about where we can reach you. All right. Uh, well, if y'all want to find us online, we're at www.strongbackfitness.com. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, Strongback Fitness, and an Instagram account, Strongback Fitness. Um, we're pretty easy to find. If you're looking for articles on how to improve your health, improve your fitness levels, uh, fix your uh, nutrition, we do a lot of that stuff. I do a lot of uh, live um, live cast seminars. Uh, they're usually very private events. Um, I do some public ones on my uh, Facebook account and off the Strongback Fitness Facebook account. So if you all want that, you can find me online. Awesome. We appreciate it, Rick. All right. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Have a good day. Please subscribe and thank you for listening. Be sure to follow at Iron Boy Powerlifting on social media for all the latest updates. Don't forget the IBP North Carolina State Push Bull Championships in Gastonia, North Carolina on July 14th. For more information about the competition, please visit ironboypowerlifting.com.